What's you guys? Warm welcome to LNT. Uh, not been out for a few weeks, guys, uh, but uh, been pretty busy at home uh, with my other, other channel as well. One or two things going on coming up to Christmas, but uh, we'll be out a bit more regular uh, later on, uh, probably the week after Christmas. Hopefully, get Christmas out of the way. Eh? Happy Christmas to everybody who watches the channel. Uh, we're down doing a bit of pike fishing today. It's the first pike match of the year at the full match series. Uh, I've picked a riverside peg here. Got the river here just behind me, guys, and there's our broad there. And I've got peg 10, peg 10 and 11, I believe, which is nice. Uh, over in on the wood side, uh, there's about nine in the match today. So we'll see how we get on uh, once I'm all set up, guys. Uh, there I am, there. Come on, my bike as well. Right, here we go, guys. Lovely day. Oh, see the kingfisher fly past then? Is that a sign of good luck? <laughs> Lovely, lovely morning. Uh, it's a bit bright for piking, but we've got a bit of a breeze on, uh, which will help. It's time of the morning, so I was up at seven this morning, out on the road on my bike to get down here. Uh, I'm fishing on my two uh, standard carp rods, guys, uh, with standard pit reels there. Lovely job, Lee. And I've got it out on two uh, five ounce leads, uh, both with traces. Uh, I've got the uh, super traces from Esox on there. They're the size four on both of those guys. The Barbless Treble, uh, I think they're good up for tour, £34, uh, 50 kilo, uh, super trices. Uh, with the weight on to get the baits down to the bottom. Uh, I'm fishing with herring today, guys, on both of them. Uh, I've got them both half hard on the bottom at the moment. I may pop one up later on with a bit of cork inside. Just pop one off the bottom, we'll see how it goes. I've got one, see this bush here, there's one just tucked in close there, just before the ripple. And the other one is way out there, just past the ripple in the middle of the lake, try and get a bit of deeper water where they uh, have a bit more confidence, especially in the uh, bright weather like this today. But uh, I'm on the river side, so we're on the dark bank side. So uh, we should have no problem with light over here. Uh, once that sun comes up, it's a beautiful morning. Uh, my uh, herrings have been soaking uh, for the last two, three days. There we go, in Erin, Hoyle and uh, Tin Tuna. Uh, they've all been soaking for uh, two days in my fridge. I've uh, got four or five of those, lovely job, Lee. So plenty of smell going out there, guys. A uh, bit of a fish attractor. Uh, I've been quite successful on those, whether it's half herring or full. Uh, they're only small ones, so uh, I should be good. And, uh, uh, I'll tune in every hour or so, let you know I'm getting on. I'm going to have myself a nice cup of coffee in a minute. Now I'm settled in. Just having a nice cup of coffee. Nice hot cup of coffee, lovely jubbly. But we'll keep plugging away, guys. It's really glorious out. today. Got a dog in my pig. trouble with this lake, it's a little bit public, it's a public path and uh, nature walk and all that so it is uh, it is nice. Uh, I've had no uh, no inquiries yet, that sun's lovely now, it's, it is chilly though, it's bloody cold. But uh, yeah because there's a lot of depth on the water I would have liked to have gone on the float today to bring that uh, to bring that um, herring up a little bit off the, off the, uh, off the deck. But I'll try it on the deck for an hour or so. Because the wind's pushing from left to right, it's going to be awkward to fish with the float because it's going to be in the uh, bushes to my right uh, before I know it. Uh, if the wind was in the right direction, I'd definitely be on a float today. Uh, if I had a wind from behind me. If it was a southerly wind, it'd be fine. But we've got a west wind at the moment, which is left to right. Uh, uh, but uh, if it calms down a bit, I might put a float on later. Or I might even pop up my uh, pop up my rigs that are on there at the moment because they're hard on the bottom at the moment. Nice. There's my rods there, guys. Nothing's happening yet. Uh, I might go live in a minute on my other channel just to pass the time away while we're waiting for a run. Well, we're an uh, hour and a half into the match. I've not had a bloody touch. So there's not nothing in my swim at the moment. Hopefully something will move in later. 
There's not a lot you can do, is there? You know, if the fishing are in front of you. A little robin here. See that robin? Oh, he's flown off. <laughs> Keeps landing on my rod. Uh, it's kingfisher that keeps flying by as well, up and down, doing his daily uh, routine, his business. So Robin back again. Lovely, cute little thing. They're all fluffed up this time of year to keep themselves warm. They fluff all the feathers up to keep a bit warmer. But uh, no, not I've not had a touch at all. Uh, we always draw two pegs each in these matches, so I'll move up to the next peg. Give this another uh, another hour, I think. Yeah, and I was casting that in, and I turned around, and there was a two fecking dogs inside my haversack. They took my pork pies and my sandwiches. Oh shit, there goes the kingfisher, just flew past again. So, Alan Tears got no dinner today. Bloody thing. Inside my haversack. Both of them went straight inside. They knew exactly where to go. I had a big family pork pie, a big massive one for my dinner, and a couple of sandwiches. All gone. Within seconds, all fucking gone. Just talk with this place if the dogs are not on leads. They're bloody out of control. It's not the dog's fault. It's a bleeding owner's. I shouted at the woman, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Kick that bloody thing on a lead if you can't control it. She said, Just give it a kick. Give it a kick. Give you a kick. See, it's not the dog's fault, it's the bloody owner's. Jesus Christ. So that's made my day. Plus I've not had a run yet. <laughs> oh, the joys of angling. Lovely jubbly. Let's have another cup of coffee. Back at you in a bit, guys. Right, I've moved up again to uh, my second choice pig. Lovely jubbly. Uh, I've got leads on, I'm on the bottom at the moment guys and uh, I'll put a bit of cork got half a sardine on each small sardine uh, I'll put a bit of cork around the side of them, wrapped it on with uh, bait elastic so they're just popping off the bottom by about one's up about uh, 6 inches popped up the other one's on a 12 inch pop up trace Got one down there, just at the edge of that bush there, just there, not too far there, because it's quite deep, guys. See the water's well up with all the rain we've had. We've had so much rain this winter, and the other ones down at the edge of this bush, just down here, not too far now. Got about uh, 15 foot of water in front of me at the moment with all this flood water. You can see the flood, the water's right up to the pegs. But uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, looks quite promising. There's one or two grebes. Because usually when the water's this high, all the silver fish move out, so you know you haven't got much chance of a pike. But I've noticed one or two greaves just working down here. So there's obviously silver fish about. So if there's silver fish about, it's got to be one or two esocks. And hopefully those alarms will go. And we'll get ourselves a run. Which would be nice. Nice sunny day as well. The sun's come out now, it's beautiful. Nice and mild. Puckaroonie. Here I am, sitting in the sunshine, that sun is glorious. Uh, it's uh, nice this time of year, just sat here in the comfy corner, on my peg there. Lovely jubbly, in easy reach of those rods, should they go off. But uh, when I do get a run, I'll let them take a, a little bit of line. You don't want to jump straight onto a pike run, guys. You've got to give them a chance to, because they'll, they'll take the fish side on, and they'll spin the fish head first, and then they'll swallow it. So you've got to give it a, a little bit of time, not too long, otherwise they'll, they'll swallow them. I've only got small baits on, so uh, I need to be on it quite quickly. But uh, give them, give, just give it a, you know, count to 10 seconds at all before you, uh, 10, 20 seconds before you actually uh, tug into them. But uh, usually when they run off, they've got it in. But you know, that first beep, don't jump on it that first beep, guys, because you're going to miss it. Lovely jubbly. It's lovely. Absolutely pucker. Right, he's hoping we'll get uh, an Esox, eh? Be nice.
just had an inquiry on my right hand rod about five minutes ago. But it dropped it straight away. But he'll come back. Mark my word, he'll come back. Alright guys, I think we're going in quarry right. Guys, nice little one, about six, seven pound, I think. There you go, nice little one. It's about uh, seven, eight, I think. Weight, nice little Aesocks. Dead eight, dead eight. Eight, eight, four. Eight, eight, four, yeah. Eight pound four. Like these lines there. See that? Awesome. There he goes. He's gone. Away he goes. Pucker. Good one, at. Right, guys. Uh, I'll show you my rig. Uh, we've had one fish. Lovely jubbly. Pucker only. Uh, so we're off to a good start. Uh, I'm just going to move one of my, my right, left-hand rod. Cause that's not moved at all. We had the fish on the right-hand rod. And uh, I'll pull that rod in. I'll just, I'll just show you my uh, rig setup, guys. What I'm using today, anyway, because of these conditions. Because uh, we've got a lot of water on the lake today, a lot of flood water, so it's really deep out there. So um, I'm not going in with the uh, pike float at the moment. I've changed my tactics. Uh, we're down on the bottom, just popping it up, and I'll just show you what rig I've got. Basics. Closer if I can. Uh, just got my uh, carp rod, carp bait runner reel. Uh, I've got about uh, 12 pound line on there all the way through uh, carbon. Uh, I've got, uh, as you can see there, guy. Can you see that at all? I've got a running uh, square uh, bomb on there. It's about uh, three ounces on there with a stop on there, stopping against the swivel. We've got the swivel of the trace. This is the main line coming here to the trace here. I've got uh, two trebles on there, uh, barbless trebles. Uh, these are size four. I've got half of uh, herring on there. You can see that, guys. Uh, got one, got its uh, head facing forward and uh, tail at the back. Hook going in the back there, the other treble. Uh, these are barbless, say size four uh, on a, uh, a steel carbon uh, plastic coated trace. Lovely with all the. Uh, Shanks uh, uh, clipped up, lovely jubbly. So just a half, tiny half of area, and that's all I'm using today. And uh, all I'm doing, each time I cast in, I just pop a bit of that smelt liquid on there. Uh, lovely stuff, get that smells going. And that's all it is, guys. As simple, simple as that, running, running lead. I've also got a cork, see the cork on there? There's a cork tube on there. So uh, because I've got it at that depth there, that's going to pop up by about a foot, no more than a foot, so it's popping up like that. It's just drifting, it's drifting nicely in the uh, in the flow, which is lovely. Right, we'll put a bit more juice on here. We'll get this one out, guys. Put more of this herring juice, just pop a bit on there, just only a tiny bit. 
is to get those juices flowing because this will give a cloud in the swim. So any pike that's about will pick up the stream from that cloud of that juice and home in on the bait. That's the plan, which works, which works so far. That's the one that picked up the fish earlier. No, the other rod did, sorry, not this one. We'll get this back out. Take off the clutch. Okay, I've just slackened off the clutches. All the clutches are slackened off. So if a pike does pick it up, if it's a decent fish, it can run and can, it can go. Lovely jobly, there we go. Both uh, baits are set. The traps are out there again. Got exactly the same rig on the right hand rod, but that's popped up by about uh, two foot guys. It's got a bigger trace pop up on it, which is nice. Yeah, I was a bit worried with the flood water, but since I've seen those greaves knocking about, that gave me a bit of confidence. And uh, I said we'd get a fish, and we had a run. So we've had one already. If there's usually one in the swim, there's usually two or three. So hopefully, we get a bigger one come along. Well, it's time for me to uh, pack up. Uh, I'm packing up early in this match. Uh, I've got an appointment to go to this afternoon, so I can't fish all the match. Which is a shame, because I could have won it. Um, but uh, never mind. Had a good little session. Uh, it was winning, but uh, somebody just down the back there has caught a 14 and a half pounder. So uh, that puts me into second place, but uh, I'm going to leave now anyway, so uh, I can't win it now because I'm leaving, but uh, never mind. But uh, that will win the um, Big Fish Trophy as well. Here you go guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll see you on the next upload. Hopefully be on a beach, beach fishing next time. Because this is the last in the Pike series, the four match series. Lovely job, Lee. Till next time, guys. Thanks for popping in. You'll be good. Stay safe.